Hi, it's really great to be with you. Um, it's bringing back lots of memories from my sort of, just to talk about my sort of journey with um, MPNs. Um, I was diagnosed about 15 years ago. I don't really remember how long ago it is now because I've just been living with it. Um, but through that, those years, um, sort of put on a few pounds and lots of other things. My girls have grown up. They were four and five. Uh, they're now 21 on Monday and 19. Um, so lots and lots of sort of life sort of goals being achieved. Um, when I was first diagnosed, um, and I'll get onto that in a minute, um, I didn't know I'd see my girls grow up. I was, like a lot of people, very fearful. But um, it's been an okay journey, and I just want to share a bit of that with you, and particularly my sort of experience of using interferon. Um, so I'll use Adam's word of serendipity. Um, it was actually diagnosed serendipitously, however you might say that, because I was supposed to give blood, um, this is sort of 15 years or so ago, um, I hadn't, uh, the girls were really young, so I'd been busy mum and everything else, and I'd thought, oh, I'll go back and start donating blood. And then I got a call from school saying that um, Jodie had got a, a splinter in her finger, and could I go and get it out? And I'm thinking, no, I want to go and give blood. So I managed to track down my husband, which is quite rare, because he never had his mobile on, and said, can you go and get Jodie's splinter out? I'm going to go and give blood, and that's what I did. Um, at that appointment, um, they said, oh, no, you're a bit anemic, we can't take blood today. But I didn't know at that time, they also send your blood off for testing. So a couple of days later, my husband rang me and said, oh, they've rung from the blood donation service, you need to go and see the GP, your platelets are a bit high. So then you Google, don't you? I'm like, oh gosh, leukemia, what, what's going on? Um, anyway, I went to see the doctor and she said, it can't possibly be that high, it's an erroneous um, count, we'll have your bloods done again. And then she rang me a couple of days later and said, hmm, there's something going on here, not quite sure what, um, but we need to get you seen too. So I was like, oh, what? <laughs> um, fortunately, I had private cover because I was self-employed, so I was able to get um, the tests and, and sort of accelerated into um, having um, more tests around whatever was going on. Um, again, Googling is not a good thing to do. Don't do it um, unless you're Googling the right places. Um, I've got all sorts of things in my mind was going to happen. Um, so I did have a private consultation. I had the bone marrow biopsy and the results really, really quickly, which was actually really great because otherwise, in the meantime, you're all sorts of scenarios, aren't you? Um, shall I be writing my will and go and travelling around the world? Um, anyway, long story short, the diagnosis was I had ET, which the consultant said is good because it's fairly stable and we can manage it. Um, and yes, you can be slot slotted back into the Na National Health Service, which for me was going to the local haematology department and starting on hydroxycarbonide. Um, I read about the stuff that I could find about hydroxycarbonide. I was a little bit concerned. It's a chemotherapy drug. And what I was more concerned about at that time was that the haematologist, um, sort of lead of the department, just kept wanting to put up the dosage. And I was thinking, I don't think that's a good thing. You know, my, my counts were coming down, so why is she putting it up? And I remember having a conversation with her, being very, very fearful and upset, and she couldn't understand the emotion around it. And at that point, um, I had happened upon MPN Voice and spoke to a lovely lady called Tamara, who was part of the original setup of the group. And she said, you need to be a patient expert and you need to challenge your GP about this and you need to go to a specialist unit. I thought, OK, I'll do that. And that's what I did. <laughs> I went back to my GP. I said, is there any chance I can go to, because I'd done some research, Adam Brooks, which was not that far away. Um, I spoke to the consultant, the private consultant, said, what do you think? He said, well, you know, you don't need to. And I'm thinking, I want to. Um, and so I went to Adam Brooks, and it was a completely different approach. Um, it was much more consultative. Uh, I'm not sort of dissing the local haematologist, but I'm just saying, for me, this is what helped me sort of feel in control. But more importantly, it was actually finding out more information through MPM Voice and going to my first patient forum day in London. I remember getting on the train and going down and meeting other people who'd got this rare condition, this rare blood cancer. I'm feeling really relieved that actually there was old people there. <laughs> I wasn't going to have to write my will. <laughs> Because at the time I was a bit younger, I'm not young enough to go in Alice's group, but I was considered a young patient at the time. And, um, and so there began my journey, so getting involved with MPN Voice, um, getting more and more information, helping with the, the drug leaflets, being part of the um, steering committee on who talk about the drugs trials. I'm just so in awe of the doctors who are representing us. They're amazing and they're so committed and I just think we're so fortunate and blessed that they are looking after us because they're so, so like Adam, they're all like that, you know, they're sort of just passionate about what they're doing, so we are blessed. 
So my treatment journey um, has been, I started on hydroxycarbamide, um, and then about two years into treatment, um, I started to not, it wasn't working as well. My plates, platelets had come down to, actually I didn't say, my platelets were actually 2,900, so pretty high. <laughs> and it was just really fortunate that I went for that blood test, because otherwise I probably would have dropped down with a stroke and not been very well. Anyway, uh, they're now around one, it's about 400, and that's over a period of years. So... Um, the hydroxy stopped working, and talking through with um, Adam Brooks, it was like, would you like to try interferon? And I actually really wanted to try interferon anyway. It was just that the hydroxycarbamide had been the first um, sort of point of um, treatment. Um, so, yes, I was happy to change over. I went through all the side effects, lots more um, sort of um, things to think about. And then the first day getting the injection, was like, oh, this is really scary. And they actually sent a nurse to the home, actually, for me to do it, which was at the time, because I live about 40 miles away from Adam Brooks, so really quite great that they did that. Um, and so we did the injection with the nurse, and then the next time when I had to do it myself, I was really scared. I don't think I'd done it properly. I'd probably squirted the, the liquid out somewhere else. But anyway, I got used to taking the injection. Um, and at, at the time, I was on the, one of the other um, compositions of interferon, um, intron A, I think, I can't remember, and then it had changed again because of supply, went on to a different one. And I was, able, I was taking it three times a week. Um, common side effects were feeling fluey, so I used to take it in the evenings, um, take paracetamol. Um, and I think it actually did trigger um, hair loss, but you, know, you have to sort of weigh up the pros and cons of being well and being able to tolerate the drug through to you know, I want to live forever with my girls and <laughs> to see them married and everything else. So um, I've stayed on interferon and then recently, well, recently in the last three years, um, moved over to Pegasus, the pegulated um, sort of slower acting one. And that was amazing because from going from three injections a week um, and my platelets still being about 600, 700, they're now, as I say, around the 400 mark. And I just take one injection every three weeks on a really, really small dose. So... I'm very happy and no side effects. <laughs> so, um, and I can wear hats as well for the, the hair loss. So that's where I'm at with the interferon. Um, and really, I, in terms of treatment through the clinic, um, I used to go sort of three or four times a year. Then it sort of, as I was stable, went sort of to um, telephone consultations, which is great because I work full time and I had you know, two younger daughters at the time. So that really works for me. So now I do um, still telephone consultations with one um, sort of follow-up every year. I think now I've moved over to the over 60s, they want to monitor me a bit more. So I was told off last time because um, I, they picked up, I was probably drinking a bit too much. So that's a good, good reminder, because <laughs> they do all those tests and they can see what's happening with your liver and everything. And I remember <laughs> saying, have you been drinking a bit much? I had come back from holiday, so I've, I've sort of... I've sort of cut back a little bit. <laughs> and I've had two bone marrow in that time, one which was completely painless and one that was actually not that pleasant. But I do recommend that. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything in the many years that I've been diagnosed now with MPN. Because I actually asked for the second one. They went, really? Do you really want one? I went, well, yeah, we, aren't we supposed to be monitoring how things are? And I went, yeah, OK, fine. <laughs> Um, so some top tips really are to be a patient expert, um, make sure you know everything there is to know about this condition. It is rare, you're not going to meet people apart from days like today that have got the same condition. So you're the one that needs to be on top of the latest research, the latest developments, the latest uh, ways of um, taking things. I mean I shared just at the break there that somebody had just been diagnosed and they're on aspirin. I said are you taking the coated aspirin? She goes, What's that? And I went, it's the one that doesn't give you a stomach problem. Oh, I wouldn't have known that. And I picked that up at a tip, you know, as a tip somewhere like this. So just be a patient expert. Take, speak to other um, patients. Um, keep a diary of your side effects so that you can then share them with your consultant. Anything, um, don't ignore it. It's always worthwhile to, um, sharing that as your consultations. Um, do keep fit, eat well, as we've already heard about. Um, I had terrible fatigue when I first was diagnosed. I just... You could just like be sleeping all night and then get up and just drag yourself through the day. Somehow over the years, that's now no longer an issue. Um, and I think it's probably because I do um, keep fit of a, of a level. I'm not like my husband, but I do walk every day or go to the gym um, and generally try to eat well um, and be part of the MPN community. This is great to be here, but online as well, as we've already heard about. Um, and finally, I'll just say, if you've got a faith, which I do have, trust God. Live Love and live your, live your life well, 
and love yourself and love life. Thank you.